Hey everybody. So my wife messaged me today and she had told me about one of her friends that she grew up with back home that he was in a lot of back pain so he had an acute injury to his low back. That sparked something in me that I wanted to share and discuss with you guys because I think it is extremely important for several different reasons and there's many layers to this. But ever since I have started to work in the realm of looking at the peripheral cutaneous nerves as potential pain generators, pain propagators, uh, signals to the brain to uh, let you know that there's danger or an issue going on, I have really started to reframe how I think about acute low back pain. So the most of the world, most of the America, Canada, most of North America, European countries, the kind of first world countries, look at low back pain, this acute low back pain as throwing out your back or slipping a disc. No disc slips. There's no coefficient of friction that causes you to slip. That doesn't happen. You don't slip discs. They don't slip back in. That does not happen. Throwing out your back, I don't even understand what that really means. These are just terms that people use and have attached to either a disc bulge or a disc herniation, which I'd argue doesn't even happen as often as people think when we're talking about acute low back injuries. Now, I have personally suffered from a, um, an acute herniated disc from when I was, uh, it was after a car accident and then after some heavy weights and a heavy track workout. But I had a, and looking back, looking at imaging, cause I had, a, had MRIs prior to that accident, after that accident, and the symptoms that I had, I had an acute herniated disc where if I cough, sneeze, had any pressure to urinate or pass a bowel movement, like I would drop to my knees because of the extreme, extreme excruciating pain that would go from my back down into both of my feet. And it was horrendous. That is an example of an actual herniated disc causing discogenic and nerve pain from the actual central nerves and the nerve roots coming off the spinal cord. If you injure your back in the gym and it is where you have a significant low back pain, it might even radiate down into the glutes, maybe a little bit into the low leg, but you are not having really pain that is taking you to your knees with a bowel movement, uh, coughing, straining, anything like that. My current hypothesis is that this is not a disc bulge, not a disc herniation, but rather an injury to the superior or middle clunial nerves. Those are the nerves that are coming off of the low back, they're coming off the lumbar spine, then off the sacral spine, and those are giving innervation to the skin over top of the, basically the lower back and then into the glutes. It's been well documented in the, in the literature that we can have chronic neurogenic inflammation coming from these nerves and contributing to chronic low back pain. And this, as a side, is one of the reasons that I think the conventional treatments for chronic low back pain are not effective because they're not even considering that as an option for, for chronic low back pain. And so the, the patients who come to me and they've had this acute low back pain, this acute flare of an injury, and a lot of the times these are gonna occur in a flexion position, such as at the bottom of a squat or while pulling a deadlift, for example, getting up out of a chair, things like that. 
What I think is happening is you're getting some, uh, basically a neuropraxia, which is an injury to an, a peripheral nerve, getting a little neuropraxia to the clunial nerves as they're either coming through the gluteal fascia for the middle clunial nerves, or they're running over top of the iliac crest for the superior clunial nerves. And so in those scenarios, a muscle relaxer is commonly prescribed and it may actually be beneficial in, in these cases of, of neurogenic inflammation and neuropraxia, but the reason is because the muscle relaxer is relaxing and releasing tension on those nerves. So when we have a nerve injury like that, even if it's chronic or if it's acute, there is dysfunction in the nerve. That dysfunction in the nerve can cause dysfunction in the motor units in the muscles surrounding that nerve, which can cause hypertonicity, which basically means a, the muscles contract. And when they contract, they can contract around the nerve, which can worsen the pain because you have this pissed off inflamed nerve that is now having physical compression, which again has been shown in the research and the literature to worsen neurogenic inflammation. So with this neurogenic inflammation, you're getting release of substance P, CGRP, different neuropeptides that the brain is now sensing as pain. And so you've got this cycle now where you've got inflammation in the nerves causing compression of the muscles, which is causing more inflammation in the nerves. And it's this vicious cycle back and forth that can be extremely painful. And so a lot of the patients that come in in this acute low back pain that is not, does not appear to be a true uh, like nerve root issue a bulge or a herniation, my typical approach is gonna be some perineural injections along with some light myofascial work that is gonna be directly over the area, which we're basically just trying to work with the nervous system at this point, but also in the surrounding musculature because we're trying to relax some of those muscles and feed slack into the system so that the nerves aren't as compressed. But going back to the imaging part, we have to be careful when patients or when you have an acute low back pain flare and you go into the doctor and they say, well, not sure what's going on, let's get an MRI. You get an MRI and that comes back showing bulge, herniation, and uh, some fatty infiltration of the multifidi muscles, for example. It is very easy for that physician to go, oh, look, herniation. Yeah, you, that, that, looks, that looks new, but it's a herniation, so you have a herniated disc. But if your symptoms do not match up with that, meaning you're not having true discogenic pain or you're not having any radiculopathy or radiculitis confirmed by physical exam into the lower extremities, then it's likely that that herniation was there beforehand and it's just now that you're in pain and we took a picture and it showed that. So we have to be careful of that logical fallacy where, and I know I've talked about this before, but where you're in pain, we take a picture, we find something and therefore that's the cause of your pain. That doesn't always match up, especially when we're talking about acute low back pain. So if you frequently have episodes of acute low back pain that are typically going to be triggered in flexion position, squat, deadlift, standing up out of a chair, getting out of bed in the morning, getting out of the car, things like that. And you just, your doctor just keeps throwing ibuprofen, uh, other anti-inflammatories, muscle relaxers at you. And you actually do notice that the muscle relaxers take the edge off and help a bit. You might want to consider getting worked up for chronic neurogenic inflammation, which you're gonna have an acute exacerbation of with the superior clunial nerves and the middle clunial nerves. If that is determined to be the cause of your pain, the treatments are very simple, very effective. We typically just use a 5% dextrose solution and inject it around the nerves. We can either do that with or without ultrasound guidance. It's always gonna depend on the case. And sometimes if the 5% dextrose is not enough, we can step it up and look at doing things like exosomes, which can be really beneficial for nerves. But please understand that a lot of the times, just throwing anti-inflammatories, imaging, and muscle relaxers at your acute low back pain is not really addressing the cause, although it can give us some insight, 
but it's not addressing the cause. And if you want to get rid of it long term and not have it come back, you really need to address the cause. All right, let me know if you guys like this, if you want more about the superior middle clunial nerves and neurogenic inflammation and leave some love below. Thanks.